Good morning.
chapter 22nd to the 27th verse. And it reads, and he, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitude away, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the, of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And when they cried out for fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Matthew 14, 22 and 27. May the Lord have a blessing in the reading of his most holy and gracious word.
body of Christ, the body of Christ, the church, is here to be light in this old dark time. So may we shine for you. May we shine bright. May this little light that we have shine and pierce every dark crevice and corner that the love of Christ may spill out. Lord, we need your help. We need you every day. There's nothing we can do about do without you, Heavenly Father. You are gracious, God. You are merciful, God. You are loving, God. And you are kind. God. So, Father, we thank you. We just pray that the sweet spirit that the to lead us this day as we come before you. Just to worship and praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. And the church says, This little light of mine, I'm going to let you shine.
sometimes we're going to be short some things, but that don't mean praise don't still have to grow up, amen. Because we're all part of the praise team. Come on, somebody. Soon as you accept Jesus in your life, you are a member of the praise team. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, sister, that sister Patsy. Come on, y'all. Let's, 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 let's sing like they've been to sing in a long time. Put your, put your mask down a little bit so we can hear you a little bit. I don't want to get, don't get Reverend Norman in trouble now. Amen. 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 We're we going to praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
God is good all the time. Let us stand as Sister Patsy plays, of course, of amazing grace. And at this time, our pastor is going to come with the word on this first Sunday of being back in the sanctuary. Amen. Holy Spirit, I decree so that you may be nice. I pray that we receive a word of encouragement and time. Bless us so that we may go out with you and bless us. Father, I need your help. I can't do this without you. I feel so weak when it comes to this. But Lord, where I'm weak, you said you would be strong. So Lord, use this old broken vessel to proclaim your word. And I truly realize I'm standing right where Jesus was standing to preach what Jesus would say to the people. So, Father God, you speak to me. Then I pray that the hearts of the prepared to hear what thus says the Lord. And I pray that if there is anyone here today that do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, never accepted the wonderful gift of eternal life, I pray today that they, that would be their day wherever they are around the world or in this building. Then I pray, Heavenly Father, that those that are in trouble, whether they're in prison somewhere or wherever they might be, they, need, they too need to know that the answer is in Jesus. We do pray for the families across our nation that are grieving right now. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the Lord family, but that's not only the family that is grieving, there's so many people Pretty grieving right now. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just bless them. But I pray for these saints that are gathered here. First time we've been able to come together in months. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would speak into our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah and amen. amen. While you're still standing, just open your Bible. You know there is no Bible or hymn books in the pews because we are doing social. Distance. It may not even be on the screen, but some of you have your own Bible, and others have your cell phones, and all that sort of stuff. But Acts chapter 17. And just for a thought today, turning the world upside down. I was listening to Dr. Tony Evans, and I believe that's what it was, and he says, There are too many part time Christians. Not enough full time saints. So I had to ponder that for a little bit that we had a whole bunch of full time saints and not part time Christians. The world would be turned upside down. Am I right about it? Acts 17, to get the first one down. When they had passed through Amphibia and through Apollos, they came to Thessalonica where that was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as it was his custom, went into them for three Sabbaths, reasoning with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead, saying, This Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of devoted Greeks, and not only a few of the leading women, joined Paul and Silas. Verse 5. But the Jews who were not persuaded, 
became Indians, took some of the evil men, and, 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 uh, in some translations you said they're base men, and, and those hardcore men, those men that uh, stir up heartaches and pains, men from the marketplace, and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar, attacking the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, them being Paul and Silas, when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some of his brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down has come here too. Isn't that amazing? Those who have turned the world upside down come to Fresno too. Those that turn the world upside down have come to your address also. Then he said this. Jason has harbored them. And these are all acts contrary to the decree of Caesar. Saying there is another king, Jesus. And he said truth in it, King Jesus. And they and they troubled and, and they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So when they had taken security from Jesus and the rest, they let them go. Again, let's turn the world upside down. Father, help us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We are living in some strange times, and everybody knows what's happening out in our streets and what's happening in our country, literally what's happening around the world. And, and, and it is some strange times. But it's not peculiar to God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. There's nothing that comes into his way that he doesn't already know all about all together. There's no pain in your life that has not already visited through the hands of Almighty God. This virus didn't take uh, God by surprise. This virus uh, uh, of the death, the, the killing in the streets, never took God by surprise because God has a plan, amen? And the plan that God has is through you and me and, and the body of Christ that reaches around the world. Paul and Silas. Uh, Paul and Silas have been through Philippi. And most of you know what happened in Philippi. They were there preaching the gospel message. When you preach the gospel message, things happen, right? When you stand up on the word of God, I don't care who you are, and tell the truth of God, things begin to happen. And the message went forth, and because they were preaching God's message, and God's messages turned people's life upside down, the rich folk in the city that had things going on, uh, all of a sudden they found that, that the word of God was threatening to them. Did you know the word of God can be threatening? Did you know the word of God can upset your little appetite? Did you know the word of God can give you a new direction in life? And so much so that they decided they were going to do one thing. They were going to put, uh, take Paul and Silas and take them to the magistrate. They did just that. They took them in to stand, court, stand in court. They took Jesus to court, didn't they? they took, they'll take you to court. They'll take me to court. But they took Paul and Silas on this occasion to the magistrate. And they took them to the court because these two men were saying things that they didn't want to hear. They were talking about Jesus Christ and him crucified, but the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. They were telling the people there, if you, if you just trust the Lord, you will not go to hell, but you will spend eternity in glory. Don't trust in Diana and all these other little G God, but put your faith in Almighty God. And then they began to, uh, to speak to the uh, money, uh, to, to the uh, witchcraft uh, people and, and all of this. So Paul and Silas, as you know the story, ended up in prison. They ended up in the jailhouse. I don't know if you've ever been to the jailhouse. You don't want to go to the jailhouse. They went and locked them up in solitary confinement, maximum security, put them in shackles down in the dungeon of the jail because these men were turning their world upside down. But just like Paul and Silas, just like you and me, we do when we know Jesus. When Jesus has come into your life, can't nothing change you. Am I right about it? And when Jesus is on board in your life, 
All the joy in the world abides in you. Everything is yes and amen in Christ Jesus through you. Amen. When Jesus reigned in your life, Paul and Silas, even though extreme pain, shackled in stocks, they were there, but they began to sing at midnight. They had a praise heart. They had a worship service. They were singing praise songs to Almighty God and worshiping Him in the middle of their pain. So much so, the Bible said that the jailhouse began to shake, began to rock. Have you ever had to sing because you couldn't do anything else and you're going through so much? You're in pain, and the only answer you have was just a, a song that would birth them in your spirit. And you begin to sing one of those little hallelujah songs. And it seemed like the pain began to leave. But oh, Paul and Silas, I believe they were in tune. They began to sing whatever song it was. Could have been said, Father, I lift my hands to you, but no other help I know. They could have been saying, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I don't know what they were singing, but they sung it so fervently and so full of the Spirit of God that the whole jail began to shake. Oh, I'm waiting for the body of Christ to begin to shake. And, and, and the prison that prisoners there with them. Those hardcore men, those men who are waiting for execution, just like Paul and Silas. They were, the doors came open, the chain broke loose. In our life, if we only trust and obey, in our life, those chains that have us bound will be broken and, and the shackles will fall off if we just give God some praise. Amen? Amen. Sometimes it seems so hard to give God praise when you're down. But I tell you, when you're down, that's the time to praise them, amen? It's easy to praise them when you're on the mountaintop. But when you seem like your money is running and you're going through some things, it's time to lift them up, amen? Even when you know that you are saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb, no matter what you do, on your job, wherever you might be, you can say, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. They can call me fanatics if I want to, but I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. But we are peculiar people, amen? It's something about salvation. That when you know that you know that you're saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb, you are no longer the same anymore. And I don't know what it is, but it seems like the fear that used to reign in you. When mom and Dick was belt and whipped you because you messed up, if you know what mom said, go get the switch. Fear grips you. Because mama wasn't playing. And, and, and she was going, Daddy, we could get away with some stuff. And you couldn't get away with mama. And we got that belt or whatever it was, fear came into you because not because what mama did you didn't love mama, but the pain that was going to be when Jesus steps into our life. It seemed like all of that stuff that used to be there, as it began to fall away, that replaced with joy, unspeakable joy. Joy that surpasses all understanding. I should be down and out, but I have peace. Even though I don't have any money in the bank, I, I should be uh, heartbroken and, 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 and suffering because of the cancer that is in the body or the, uh, or the arthritis that's pulling you down. But I still have joy because God reigns in your life. I still should have joy despite my circumstances. Paul will say rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. May not be sheltered in, but can't stop my joy. Can't stop my joy. Because you can sing and shout all around the house, amen? May not be able to go out to your next door neighbor, but your neighbor, if his windows are open when it's cool like the other day, you can sing and play your music and he'll hear you. And you can tell them all about the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Paul and Silas, they went into the jailer's house. See, when you got caught, if it was me, if I had been locked up, I pray that I wouldn't have done that. If I had been locked up, stretched out, Gonna be executed the next day. God set me free. I think I would have been put right out of the club. But the jailer said, Come to my house. I have my wife and my children that need to know about this man named Jesus that freed you and set the captives free. I need to know about him. I want my house to know about him. How many of you want your house to know that God is real? How many of you want, to, want your home and your, and your family and your friends to know? That there is no God like our God. How many of us really want everybody to know our acquaintances and even our enemy to know that whatever you're going through, there's a God in heaven that night. And he can give you testimony. Some of us have been through some stuff. Am I right about it? God has picked us up out of some muck and mire. 
Am I right about it? God has redeemed us when we didn't think we were redeemable, but God brought us through. Sometimes he touched us and we were in some dirty places. He touched us like he touched a leper and he saved our soul and put something on the inside and that something on the inside is the Holy Ghost that keeps us and leads us and guides us and be loved with us every day. Amen? Paul and Silas is like everybody else. When they preach the gospel, people don't like it. People get upset about the good news of Jesus Christ. He left Philippi after leaving the jailer's house. He went on into Thessalonica. You know, Paul was not always saved. But now when God came into his life, God said, you're all right. And you're my servant. We have not always been saved. But God said, you now are my servants. Go and tell somebody about the good news. Go into the highways and the byways and what compels them. But what I have for them is more and better than what the world has. Satan comes to do nothing but steal, kill, and destroy. How many of you are mad enough, tired enough of Satan stealing from you? The word of God said he can't touch you with the word in your heart. Jesus said, speak the word to him. Satan tried to do this. He had to get permission from God to test us anyway, to try us anyway, to give us any type of temptation. But the word of God, Christ said, it is written. And I declare, when the word is in our heart, when we, when we decide to hide that word in our heart so that we might not sin against him, that we can live holy. No, we're not all perfect. But we forget sometimes that flesh rises up. But Paul would say, you beat your body into subjection early. Pray when we pray to you, things change. The hardest hearts can be changed. When we meet Jesus, we can't remain the same. Paul, like I said, was not always saved, but on that road to Damascus, he had a new outlook on life. The gospel. The gospel is simply this. The gospel is the good news. And it's the good news of who? Jesus Christ. It's the gospel message that's going to change our nation. It's not coming from the White House unless the White House preach the good news. It's not coming from the streets unless the streets preach the good news. The only way it can come from the White House is if the, if the president or his cabinet love Jesus and they begin to stand up and say, it's not about me, but it's about Jesus. It's not about what I've done for the economy, but it's what Jesus is doing. He can do it through me, but all my trust is in the Lord. When the, when, when the, when the body stands up and when the leaders stand up, whether they are pastors as leaders, deacons as leaders, all the leaders stand up and say, although though they might slay me, yet will I trust him. Uh, he's able to deliver me from the fiery furnace, but even if he don't, I will not bow down to the things of the world. God is calling for some holy people to turn the world upside down. He don't need any part-time Christians, but he need full-time saints. Amen? He don't need Christians on Sunday morning, but they act like the devil on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And if they feel like it, they can come up to worship on Sunday and shout hallelujah. The Lord is my light and my and my shield and my buckler. He's the head of my life. But on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we put him in the back pew, the amen of our life. He's not the head of our life anymore. God wants some Christians who are going to stand up. He wants some people that will be saints of his. He wants people that the light shine. The gospel in the New Testament means simply, uh, uh, not just simply the books, but it's a way of life. The gospel, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They tell us about God. They tell what God is going to do for us. He said, I'll never leave you alone like I said. He said, I'll watch over you. I'll be there with you. I'll provide for you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. He's always there. But the gospel is much more than that. The gospel message saved, but it's much more than salvation. It is keeping us. The good news of the gospel is not like the law. The Lord had us doing this. And the Lord had us doing that. I'm not doing this and not doing that. But the gospel is just given. We can accept it or not accept it. He's given us. He's offered it us. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You can't work your way to heaven. Hmm. You work your way to hell because the wages of sin is what? Death. But the 
gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. How many know you're on your way to glory today? How many know that if your life will require that you right now, you would be instantly standing in the very presence of Almighty God? If you're not sure about that, we need to get it right today. The law pointed to our sin. Grace of God through the gospel saved us from our sins. The gospel is not a new plan of salvation. The gospel is, it, it was fulfilled, it was fulfilling God's plan, which he had from the beginning. The gospel is a guaranteed promise by God for the remission of our sins. The gospel is a message that <clears throat> the kingdom of God, the gospel is of God's grace, the gospel is of making a difference in all of our lives. And then Paul and Silas went on down to Thessalonica, and when they got to Thessalonica, nothing had changed. They just keep on preaching the gospel. Thessalonica was a big town. But they went in, and there were many people, proselytes. And proselytes are Gentiles that have decided to follow Judaism. And, and, and they went in. You know when you go in and talk about Jesus, the Bible said, let me read so when we get through this, when they got there uh, uh, and they began to teach Jesus, many of them accepted and they didn't preach, they didn't preach themselves. Who did they preach? Jesus. They preached him born and of a virgin, crucified, he lived 33 and a half years, but died on the old rugged cross because the wages of sin is death and he paid it for us and he rose again on the third day took a, a flight back into heaven on the 40th day, and, and he's coming back again. We don't know what day, but it's soon and very soon, I would say. He is coming back to take his people on home. Are you ready to go home with Jesus? One day, the eastern sky is going to open wide. Might be at nighttime, might be in the daytime, might be in the morning, or in the afternoon. But Thessalonians said, uh, Thessalonians, Thessalonians said, I don't want to be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep. Dead in Christ to do what? Rise first. Then those that remain shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Saints, we just need to go out and turn this old world upside down. You can start in your home. Tell them to set your house in order. Get ready because he's coming back. You can start at home. Tell them if you keep living that way, you're going to bust hell wide open. You can keep uh, 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 and turn this world upside down. Tell them you can have joy. That's the past all to understand. You don't have to even. I, I talked about how many people speed. We did that this morning. And uh, some of us just speed, right? Well, I told you, I got gotten so many tickets in the past that I don't speed anymore. Uh, I haven't been, haven't had a speeding ticket in 30, 30 some years, I guess. Why? Because I do the speed limit. And then I used to, when I was speeding, I, I, I would look at every overpass and see if I could see the cop sitting up there. I had radar detectors in my car, and I had all this sort of stuff. Then when you saw the red lights coming behind you, they didn't have to be anything for you, but your heart dropped. I mean, oh, Lord, what am I going through? And they just zoom on by. But when you start doing what the law said, when you start living for the right way, and that cop lights come on, you, you know they're not coming for you. They just go on back. You don't have to look up on it uh, on the overpasses and see where they're hanging out at with the radar guns ready. Why? Because they're not looking for you. Because the speed limit says 65, you're doing 60. And, the, and, and I'm afraid to, somebody said, you can take five and they won't bother. No, no, no. It says 65, that's where I'm going to be. 65. I lock it so I don't have to be uh, attempted for it. The word of God says we need to hide the word of God in our hearts so that we might not sin against God. The word of God says we must love even our enemies and do good to them and pray for them who even persecute us. And he says, I'll make everything all right. I'll make your enemies behave. That's the good news. He said, I'll fight every battle for you. That's the good news. When your money is funny, he said, I'll provide for you. That's the good news. He said, I'll take care of you. People don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. When he was in Thessalonica, he began to preach. He began to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said many of them came to know Jesus. Many of the proselytes came to know Jesus. Many of the women came to know Jesus. But a whole bunch of them. 
didn't want to have anything to do with this Jesus. And they became envious. What do you do when you don't want to have anything to do with Jesus? And you become envious. You find the people just like you. And you go round them up. And the Bible says they went and found some vile people. You see some vile people in the streets these days, right? There are some innocent protesters out there protesting and trying to do it peacefully. But then there are some vile people that are breaking your house that night. They'll break in and take big streams from this store or that store. They don't care. And when Paul and Silas were preaching the gospel, the gospel message, the good news of Jesus Christ, the joyous message, the message that brings peace and hope down on the inside of everybody, there was a lot of people out there that said, no, I'm not going to let this happen. And, and, and Paul and Silas had experienced it many times before. You know, they were locked up in Philippi. But they didn't stop preaching the word of God. Paul had locked, been locked up in jails. But he never stopped preaching the word of God. Saints, let me tell you, we go through some stuff, but never stop living for the Lord. Amen? Amen. When you find yourself seem like everything is, 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 is funny and messed up in your life, keep on living for the Lord. Because this too shall pass. Amen? Amen? You won't and I won't be in a hard place forever. Every once in a while, he'll allow us to go into a hard place so someone else can see us and know how God delivers. Because we can't get out of it, but God will get you, get, get, get you out. The people on the sea, when the boat was beginning to fill up the water, and all Christ did was come up out top of the boat and said, peace, be still. The water, the wind, the hail. He's doing that for us now. When he went into Thessalonica, he went in preaching Jesus. Just got out of prison, but he went in preaching Jesus. Almost lost his life for preaching Jesus, but he went in preaching Jesus, and he kept on preaching. Saints, let's turn this world upside down with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Let it start in our house, in our streets. And you don't have to be, uh, 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 what the word I'm looking for, you don't have to be obnoxious or whatever with it, but just live it, and people will see it. And, it, and just ask them some questions, and you can give them the answer. But the answer is what? In Jesus. Well, they got there and they got these vile men and they formed a mob. And just like they did Jesus Christ, they went through the city saying, we got to kill Paul and Silas. We got to get Paul and Silas. They are here. They turned the world upside down. And, and now they're here to do the same thing here. They are here to destroy you and they're here to destroy you. And they were just there to give them hope. They were there to give us hope. But yet the mob mentality went through all of the city and stirred the Bible said, stirred the whole city up against these two men of God. And, and, and they went to Jason's house. Jason, you know, he went to my house. I was at my house there. And, and, and Jason did not say, I don't know where they are. I've never seen them. He didn't do that. Peter said, when they said, you know what they beat up? Peter said, no, I don't know the man, never seen the man. But Jason stood up and said, okay. Yeah, he was here. He's not here now. But they, the Bible said they took Jason and all the people in the house and just turned them, dragged them to the, to, to, to the magistrate, turned them down to the jailhouse, fined them, and, and, and probably told them, don't you ever follow this man anymore. And but Jason and them went on back home. It's not written in the word, but not adding anything to the word. But when you know Jesus, you just can't hold your peace, amen? And then somebody tell you, shut up, you say, let me tell you about the man from Galilee. When they tell you, hold your peace, you're going to cry out even the, the most. Uh, because the word of God cannot be hindered. It cannot be stopped. Jesus was quick. He was beaten. He was spit upon. And we're here to celebrate all of that today in the communion time. But let me tell you, we are here to be a living testimony of what the Holy Communion is all about. It, it is how God, through the gospel, was preached to us. Jesus Christ, through the gospel, was preached to us by somebody, and we say, yes, Lord, come into my life and save me. And he came in and he saved us. And then we were saved by the old hymn book says, the world behind me and the cross before. Though no one else follow, I will follow Jesus. Saints of God, if you're here today, even if you're out in the, out in the viewing room, and you don't know this man from Galilee that loved you so much that he died on the cross for you, 
rose again on the third day, and he said, let not your heart be troubled. I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And he went on back into glory to prepare a place, and he said, I'm coming back to receive you unto myself. That where I am, you can be also. And let me tell you, I'm in the 70s now, and I don't know how much longer I'm going to live, but I know one thing. I'll be with Christ for an eternity. But there'll be no more heartaches, no more pains, no more aches, no more bad bones, and all that sort of stuff. But we'll have joy that surpass all understanding. No more coronavirus, no more bills to pay, but peace with Jesus. Now, talking about the monies, we will walk on the streets paved with gold. The gates of the city is lined with pearls and precious metals and precious jewels. I tell you, we will have no more heartaches and no more pains, no more trouble. We don't have to worry about our transportation. We don't have to worry about trying to get a car. We don't need a car. We can just say, go here and here. One of these old days, when this life is over, we're going to fly away and we're going to go home to be with Jesus. Again, the wages of sin is death. Oh, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Why don't you pray? Father God, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your love. And Lord Jesus, I do pray now if there's anyone out there that do not know you as their Lord and Savior. They would just pray a simple prayer that's inviting you in. Revelation says, Go, I stand at the door and knock. And if you hear my voice, open, harden not your heart, but open the door. And I'll come in and I'll stay. So I pray, Heavenly Father, if there's anybody, anyone that needs my voice here in this place or out in the lands that needs you, I just pray that they'll open their heart and accept that wonderful and free gift of eternal life that is in Christ Jesus. Then I pray, Heavenly Father, that if Someone be the church home. They will soon unite somewhere. Because we all have gifts and talents that we can use to build up the body of Christ in our own way. I need you and you need me to do the work of ministry. That's what it's all about. So, Father, I pray also that if anybody's sick, you're the great healer. You're the great I am. So bless them in their bodies. And I pray this in the sweet name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen. 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 God is good, isn't he? All the time. All the time. Brother Deacon, would you take away the offering pads and just come back? First of all, anybody need Jesus in their life today? Anybody need special prayer today? Okay, I see some spirit. Anyone else? I see you. Lord, we have two people that have raised their hand for special prayer. And then Lord, we will minister to them a little later. We have some of the ladies to work with them. But I pray right now, Lord, that you will meet every need. You know it. You know exactly what it is they stand in need of. Health issues, family issues, whatever the issue may be, Lord, you know it all together. So I pray that we agree with them and trusting in you, that you provide the answer. That you provide you provide everything that is needed and bless them immensely. Give them the desires of their heart. And that, that desire is called by them, that their heart and mind is fed on you. You said you give them the desires of their heart. And Lord, we believe that. We trust that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Amen.